Tinker is one of the most enjoyable heroes to play in Dota 2, but also one of the most annoying to play against. His set of spells allows him to dominate his opponents during the laning phase, transition into a fearsome ganker in the mid game, before settling as an annoying split pusher 1 vs 1 chain nuker in the late game. This guide explores how to excel as Tinker at all stages of the game, as well as a few counters that ruin Tinker's day. Let's begin with the spell build. Tinker is best played as a solo mid, as he is extremely dependent on both experience and gold. That means you will most likely be facing a single opponent. As such, your spell priority depends almost entirely on the opponent you'll be laning against, meaning you should hold off on leveling your first spell until you see who the enemy has sent mid. Are you facing a hero with considerable range, such as Sniper? Are you facing a hero with Disables or Nukes that you'd rather keep your distance from, like Dro or Zeus? Level heat-sticking missiles to nuke their health down from the safety of your tower? Facing a nimble opponent whose spells can disjoint your missiles? Then level your laser for a reliable nuke. Are you up against a melee hero? March of the Machines can zone them out entirely. To do this, cast March at a 45 degree angle from the creep wave, setting the machines to march from your opponent's side towards your tower. This way, your opponent will be hit by several machines if he attempts to last hit a creep. The way March of the Machines works is that an individual machine stops when it hits an enemy and deals its advertised damage to that enemy. If you cast March towards the enemy creep wave, your opponent can simply stand behind his creeps and be shielded by them, at least until they die. Casting it at a 45 degree angle ensures that no creep shields any other unit from the march and casting it towards your side ensures your opponent gets hit as soon as he enters the area. Do note that prioritizing march will make you weaker at ganking for your teammates, as you miss out on the nuking potential of laser and missile. In the laning phase, Tinker has good base damage and a snappy attack animation, though the projectile is painfully slow. The slow projectile speed does make last hitting harder, as the enemy can deny his creep before your projectile hits it. All in all, Tinker is built to harass, and you should take advantage of this to dominate your lane. Let's move on to item build. For starting items, take health regeneration, mantle of intelligence, circlet and a mango. You will want to turn your mantle and circlet into a null talisman as soon as possible. Alternatively, you could start with a null talisman to begin with, but that leaves room for only one item of regeneration, which is why I recommend against it. For early game, you'll want a bottle and boots of speed. Remember to keep checking the river for runes once you get your bottle, and don't hesitate to gank your teammates' lanes if you get a haste or invisibility rune. If you get regeneration, double damage, or an arcane rune, you can return to your lane and use the rune's buff to trade favourable hits with your opponent. If you get an illusion rune, send one illusion back to mid so your enemy thinks you have returned to lane and use that misdirection to gank for your team. You might as well use your free teleportation scroll before you get your first core item. Speaking of core items, Tinker has a standard set with little deviation no matter the circumstances. You'll want Boots of Travel, Blink Dagger and Sheep Stick in that exact order. All of these have expensive components that require you to save up large amounts of gold, such as Boots of Travel's 2000 gold recipe, or Sheep Stick's 2700 gold mystic staff, or Blink Dagger's cost of 2250 gold. If you die while saving up for any of these, you'll lose a lot of gold, therefore you would do well to use Dota's Quick Buy feature. If you don't know what that is, Shift click on your desired item in the shop and you'll add it to your quick buy selection. If you have enough gold, you can instantly purchase it by pressing the quick buy key, which is assigned to F5 by default. You can go into the options menu to rebind it to a key you find more comfortable using, preferably one that's easier to reach at a moment's notice. Now that you know what quick buy is, how does it help tinker? While you save up for your core items, always keep a cheaper item in your quick buy list. If you get ambushed, mash that quick buy button before you die. Hopefully you'll spend a good deal of your unreliable gold rather than have it go to waste. Here's one example of how you could use quick buy at all stages of the game. While you save up for your first core item, Boots of Travel, add Soul Ring to your quick buy list. Many would consider Soul Ring a core item on Tinker, rather than relegate it to a second choice. Indeed, if your Boots of Travel is delayed, Soul Ring can be very helpful in keeping you in lane by providing constant mana in exchange for your health. In the rare event of you being zoned out by, say, a Zeus spamming Arc Lightning, you can turn the tables by using Soul Ring in conjunction with Rearm to send a continuous barrage of missiles that'll force him to retreat. However, if you aren't having difficulties in the laning phase, 
Rushing boots of travel is easier when 800 gold isn't being spent on Soul Ring. Once you have boots of travel, mana isn't really a concern as you can always go back to base to refill. You also have that bottle that you purchased early game as an additional, albeit limited, source of mana. Once you've got boots of travel, you should double down on ganking by actively encouraging your teammates to pick fights with any enemy they encounter. As boots of travel can be rearmed, you can back any of your allies at a moment's notice as long as there is a creep or tower nearby. While ganking, remember to cast missile as soon as you get in range, then continue approaching the target to cast your laser. That way you can time your laser to coincide with the missile impact, consolidating both nukes into one burst that'll give your target less time to react or recover. If no ganking opportunity presents itself, you should be farming all over the map, teleporting on one creep wave, casting march at a 45 degree angle against the upcoming enemy creep wave, rearm, teleport to another creep wave, cast march, and so on until you don't have mana to rearm, at which point you'll teleport back to your fountain. You'll want to do this to accumulate 2,250 gold for your next core item, Blink Dagger. While you save up, it's a good idea to add either Dagon or Ether Lens into your quick buy queue. You're going to get both of these items sometime later anyway, and getting them early is not going to set you back as much as losing gold if you die. Once you get Blink Dagger, you can shift queue Blink into the trees while teleporting on a friendly creep wave. This way you can cast March from the trees, which is much safer than casting it out in the open, but does mean that your machines may not hit the entire creep wave. Many opt to blink after casting March in the open, a more hazardous approach that can kill more creeps, but does leave you vulnerable for significantly longer. You should now start saving up for Sheepstick, which has by far the most expensive components of any item you'll purchase on Tinker. Sheepstick's synergy with Rearm is perhaps Tinker's most notorious trait, enabling you to keep your targets continuously hexed while you nuke, rearm and nuke them to death. While you accumulate the gold to purchase Sheepstick though, you want to keep Ether Lens in your quick buy if you haven't completed it already. Ether Lens and Sheepstick share a common component, Void Stone, which should be the first item on your quick buy list. Ether Lens is significantly cheaper than Mystic Staff, the most expensive component of Sheepstick. Thus, you wouldn't be the first to complete Etherlens before Sheepstick, though you don't quite reach Tinker's potential without the latter's hex. Kaya is another cheap item you'll want to consider adding to your quick buy list. Its intelligence provides some mana and mana regeneration, but its real draw is its passive, which lowers the cost of your spells and items by 10%, as well as increasing their damage by 10%. We have covered the benefits of Kaya in more detail in a video linked in the description below. Alternatively, you could keep Dagon in your quick buy list while you save up for Sheepstick. The aforementioned items, Etherlens and Dagon, are still essential in any six-slotted Tinker's build. What is situational is the order in which you purchase them. Etherlens makes sense as Tinker's last purchase as it augments his other spells and items cast range while offering no active ability of its own. As stated earlier, it has an extremely easy build-up and there's no shame in finishing it early if your farming hits a snag. Dagon, on the other hand, adds yet another powerful nuke to Tinker's arsenal. Some players opt to build Dagon before Sheepstick in order to maximise their nuking power in the mid-game. In this build, you'll have max laser and missile by the time you get the first level of Dagon. This means you'll spend a total of 430 mana to deal a total of 882 actual damage with each cycle, not accounting for spell amplification or additional magic resistance beyond the base 25%. At this stage of the game, the targets you're supposed to pick won't have additional magic resistance anyway, and the tiny amount of amplification you get from your intelligence should counteract the tiny amount of spell resistance they get from strength. We haven't included the mana cost of rearm into this, as you will not want to enter situations where you'll need it due to its long channel duration in its early levels. Feel free to jump on any squishy enemy that's under 850 health as long as you have 430 mana though you should choose targets that lack escape abilities and disables of their own. I recommend trying to rush Sheepstick though, as Tinker has dire need of a hard disable. Once you get your Sheepstick, you should complete Dagon if you haven't already and start upgrading it once you have. You want to keep upgrading your Dagon through the late game, as a fully upgraded Dagon is your most powerful nuke against any target that hasn't acquired additional magic resistance beyond the base 25%. Let's move on to Talent Build. For your first talent, you'll have to choose between plus 75 cast range or 6% spell amplification. You should have maxed both laser and missile by the time you get this choice. The 6% spell amplification adds 35 actual damage to your missile and laser combo, taking base magic resistance of 25% into account. 
Once you buy a level 1 Dagon, the 6% spell amplification amounts to 53 additional damage per cycle. In the late game, your fully upgraded Dagon will push the spell amplification bonus from 71 to 77 additional damage per spell and item cycle. You can either go for that, or forgo all that for plus 75 cast range. Because each spell and item that Tinker gets has unique cast range, the additional 75 cast range improves each to a different degree. For example, Laser sees its cast range improve by 11.5%, March of the Machines by 25%, Sheepstick by 9.4%, and Dagon by 9.4 to 12.5%, depending on its level. This makes it easier for you to keep your target in range, and makes it harder for the enemy to escape, especially in the late game when he'll be slowed by your hex. There is no clear winner between the two talents. If you're facing tanky heroes who rely on their durability rather than their speed, you'll find the spell amplification more useful. On the other hand, if you're facing squishy but nimble enemies, the cast range will make it easier to keep them in reach. Look at the situation you're facing and adapt accordingly. For your second talent, you can choose between 10% spell lifesteal or an additional 40 movement speed. There is an argument to be made that Tinker relies on blink and teleport for mobility and not walking. That being said, I do find that the additional 40 movement speed makes it much easier to keep your enemy in range or to get away when you're muted or otherwise prevented from blinking or teleporting away. The 10% lifesteal will heal you for 58 health with a maxed missile and laser, 88 health with level 1 Dagon thrown in and 118 to 128 health with a fully upgraded Dagon. That's 118 to 128 health per cycle. Once you've completed your late game build, you have around 3000 mana. This will allow you to rearm your cycle three times and use your spells to a maximum of four times. It also means you will heal around 350 to 500 health before you deplete your mana entirely. This can make the difference between life and death in late game team fights, but then again, so can the 40 movement speed if you're prevented from using your items. Ultimately, your choice with this talent should depend on the enemy team composition and their item choices. For your third talent, you have the choice between plus 8 March of the Machines damage or plus 10 armor. The former amounts to a 20% increase to March of the Machines damage. You should always pick this, especially since March of the Machines is your bread and butter for farming, pushing and counter pushing. As for the 10 armor, Tinker should never rely on armor when he can rearm laser and sheepstick. In the event you are silenced and muted, the 10 armor will not save you and should thus never be picked. For your final talent, you'll be asked to pick either a 100 additional damage for your laser or add a mini stun to your missile. The laser talent significantly increases your effective range and mana efficiency and should be the standard choice. However, you'll want to pick the mini stun talent if the enemy has a channeling ability that you want to disrupt, such as Shadow Shaman's Shackles or Enigma's Black Hole. We have already covered what your late game spell and item rotation should be in another video. To summarise, you should blink, hex, missile, dagon, laser, rearm, and repeat. The aforementioned video discusses how to do this before your target recovers from Sheepstick's hex, and also examines each spell's cast animation and backswing. So feel free to check that out, the link is in the video description below. With a fully upgraded dagon, this ideal rotation deals 1282 damage per each cycle for 810 mana, which can be simplified to 3 damage for 2 mana. This assumes you choose a laser damage talent. It also doesn't account for spell amplification or additional magic resistance beyond the base 25%, but spell amplification and magic resistance mitigate each other, so it doesn't matter as much anyway. The 3 to 2 ratio is a useful rule of thumb to keep in mind while considering potential targets. Does your target currently have 3000 hit points? You should have at least 2000 mana before jumping on him. This only applies if you already have a fully upgraded Dagon and Sheepstick though. With that, Let's move on to situational items. Scepter is a popular item on Tinker, upgrading his laser to bounce on nearby units as well as doubling the number of enemies that his missiles can hit. These two improvements greatly increase Tinker's effectiveness in team fights and base defense. However, if your team has the upper hand, base defense shouldn't really be an issue. Just spam March of the Machines on the enemy creep wave to stop the occasional push dead in its tracks. Furthermore, team fights aren't really Tinker's specialty as the only hard disable available to Tinker, Sheepstick, only works on a single target. 
Indeed, Tinker is specialised at eliminating isolator targets and remains vulnerable to his target's teammates, interrupting his rearm while he focuses his spells and items on his target. While Scepter certainly increases his damage output versus multiple enemies, it offers him no protection from enemy crowd control. This is why I classify Scepter as a defensive purchase rather than a standard recommendation. Let's move on to a defensive purchase that I heartedly recommend, Lotus Orb. Upon use, it applies a basic dispel and reflects any spell cast on you for the next 6 seconds. This item is fantastic on Tinker as he can rearm it, meaning he can keep spell reflection perpetually active on himself or on his teammates. As this buff lasts 6 seconds, you could theoretically keep it perpetually active on your entire team, though using rearm solely for this purpose is impractically wasteful on your mana. In practice, you want to cast Lotus Orb on yourself before you teleport onto your creep wave. This way, any disabler or nuker waiting to ambush you will be punished with the same spells and items he uses on you. Lotus Orb is the most effective against target disablers like Pudge or Lion, though it does have a secondary function in dispelling debuffs and negative effects. Silences are a particularly good example of this. If you're facing a team stacking silences, Lotus Orb is indispensable as it immediately removes silences upon cast. In the same vein, Ghost Scepter is similarly useful against physical damage heavy heroes such as Phantom Assassin and Ricky. In the late game, if you have more gold than you know what to do with, you could upgrade this into an Ethereal Blade for some offensive capability, though it is nowhere near as good as it used to be when it was an instant effect. Black King Bar is another defensive purchase, but a more situational one as it cannot be rearmed. That being said, you may still find it necessary against Disable Heavy lineups. In the late game, remember to keep it in your backpack while it's on cooldown, as you'll want that inventory slot for an item that you can rearm. Let's move on to counters. Tinker is the most effective when he gets the jump on his target. Conversely, he remains vulnerable to any hero that can get the jump on him. A good example of this is Storm Spirit. Storm can easily reach Tinker from a great distance with Ball Lightning, and can cast Electric Vortex while in Ball Lightning to stop Tinker from blinking or teleporting to safety. Another hero that can ruin Tinker's day is Clockwork, who can use his rocket flare to scout the forest for a hiding Tinker. If he finds you, he can easily catch you with his hookshot and prevent you from escaping by blocking you in his power cogs and interrupting your boots of travel with battery assault. In short, Clockwork makes you a sitting duck, which is the last thing you want to be. If your team doesn't have a hero that counters Tinker, you can still purchase Nullifier, which cuts him off from the items that give him survivability, damage, crowd control and mobility. Without his items, he is a sitting duck with no escapes or disables to speak of. Nullifier is an offensive purchase and depends on you getting the jump on Tinker. How do you keep your hero safe from Tinker ambushing you? Black King Bar will make you immune to Tinker for its active duration, as none of Tinker's spells or items pierce spell immunity. If Tinker hexes you before you can activate it though, it will not save you as it cannot be activated while you are hexed. Obviously, you can't keep Black King Bar perpetually active as it has a limited duration and a very long cooldown, so you'll want another item to keep you safe from Tinker's ambushes. Lincoln's Sphere can be a lifesaver as it blocks the first enemy spell cast on you, giving you just enough time to activate Black King Bar. If you're playing Tinker, you'll want to minimise the time your target's Lincoln Sphere grants him. Therefore, pop his Lincolns with Dagon and immediately cast Sheepstick after that. Items have no cast time or animation, so as long as you press your keys fast enough, your target will have very little time to activate his Black King Bar before he's hexed. You should also watch out for the enemy team stacking blade mails when you spam March of the Machines to stop their push. If they activate all their blade mails at the same time, you will be dead before you know what hits you. If you see multiple enemies purchasing blade mails, invest in a Scepter of Divinity to ride out their blade mails active. Legion Commander can also be lethal to Tinker if she can get him into a duel, though she does have to be right next to you to do this. Luna's Scepter upgrade makes her ultimate a grave threat to Tinker, as she can cast it in his general vicinity to nuke him down. If she has picked her mini stun talent, her ultimate will also stop you from rearming or teleporting away to safety. Nick's Assassin counters Tinker at all stages of the game. He can stay invisible with his ultimate, ambush Tinker when he least expects it, turn Tinker's damage against him with Spike Carapace, and prevent him from escaping with Impale. Mana Burn is also devastating due to Tinker's proclivity to purchase intelligence items. This is one of the rare situations that necessitates the Black King Bar, though you'll have to be proactive in your use of it as it can't be activated while impaled. Enough with heroes who counter Tinker, what about those that can help him? 
Tinker appreciates any hero who can provide him with additional platforms to teleport onto. Any hero with summons fits this bill. Though special mention does have to go to Beastmaster's Hawk, Visages, Familiars or Lycan's Wolves. Wolves have permanent invisibility once their summoning spell is maxed, which means the enemy will not see Tinker teleporting onto a wolf unless they have true sight, and can make the difference between you getting a kill and you getting killed. Invisible heroes provide an even greater synergy if you can pony up the additional 2,000 gold to upgrade your boots of travel early. Bounty Hunter is perhaps a quintessential example of this. He is a formidable ganker in his own right. With you backing him up though, the two of you can take on multiple enemies as well as make more gold together. His ultimate tracks enemies through the fog of war, which gives you targets for your missiles to lock onto, as well as prevents the enemy from dodging the launched missiles with invisibility spells thanks to its true sight over them. And did I mention it greatly increases the gold you get for killing the target? Technically, you don't need to upgrade your boots of travel to reap these benefits, though upgrading them will let you teleport onto him while he's invisible, which greatly increases your team's ganking potential. Tinker also appreciates any hero who can keep him alive, especially if the enemy team has any of the aforementioned counters. Heroes that can improve his survivability include Oracle with his False Promise and Omni Knight with his Repel and Guardian Angel. And that concludes our guide on Tinker. If you like this video, feel free to check out our last advanced guide, which analyzes Kaya's passives and quantifies its benefits in terms of efficiency. There's another guide that examines how armor, block, evasion, and accuracy work in Dota 2. There are more advanced guides in the works, so please hit the like, subscribe, and bell button so you get notified as soon as they're up. Thank you for watching.